Hi everyone, so there's one little car, it's Pleco, that really stands out from the crowd. Of course, all the currently accepted genera, many display odontodes from sparse to small to large and extensive. Only Ancestrus displays tentacles though, and these arise out of the heads, usually immature males, or assumed immature males. Odontos are external teeth, spike-like structures present on the body of the fish and also a vertebral by the gill opercula. In development, and once developed, there's a fleshy um, cutinous sheath which surrounds the odontodes, and this is believed to be the origin of the tentacles. Odontos tend to also be larger in males. Evolution of these structures likely increased the growth of the cutinous she sheath that then sort of enveloped the odontodes and eventually replaced them. It is theorised by Burgess in 1989 that the tentacles likely have some role in identifying the velocity, the direction of water flow while also having a chemical sensory function. Ono in 1980 found that these tentacles were covered in taste buds acting as sensory stimuli for the gu um, gustatory stimuli. He also found that law carbs in general had taste buds across the entire body and this is common with catfish. Catfish have the best or most advanced a taste system in all of vertebrates and probably compared to a lot of animals it is very much superior. Um, it's believed that the tentacles once it, some believe that the tentacles provide a respiratory structures, although most ancestors can breathe atmospheric air under hypoxic conditions. And pectoral movements in spawning aerate the eggs, so these structures might not really be needed for respir respiration. It's largely theorised that the tentacles' largest use is for the development and care of eggs and larvae, larvae being the baby fish, um, the fry, and sisters spawn within caves, so the males guard, the, guard and care for the offspring. It is also possible that females have preference for males with larger tentacles, as this mimics successful um, care of fry already in the cave, and the females will prefer a male that is already successful with raising its own raising fry uh, from other females and it shows that he's in um, he's quite popular with them so it is an example of sexual select well possible example of sexual selection a process in which one sex's preference for a characteristic enhances and selects for this um, pre selects for this characteristic which increases the frequency of the characteristic within the population. It is shown as likely females select for males who are already um, successful with offspring and this is shown across the animal kingdom. It is also an example of larval mimicry in which the male is sort of mimicking the uh, larvae present already in the cave and the larvae do look kind of like that I think particularly when they still have their yolk sac is quite and there are photos which are very it does look like almost someone's taken the tentacles of the male and placed it ahead, even though that is actual the actual larvae. But I believe it doesn't say the entire answer to this. There, while there is a number of ancestors where males display impressive amounts of tentacles, and the females have it to a lesser extent, even well, not that much it. So you'll get many species where um, the female will have slight protruding tentacles or none at all. For example, common bristle nose and citrus AF cirrhosis. There is also a number where the females display tentacles to the same extent or a similar extent, maybe a little bit less than the males. For example, Ancestrus anunculus displays an impressive set of tentacles in the males and females. Females tend to display a single row of larger forward facing tentacles whereas males get multiple rows and do occasionally get branching but that is not particularly common. And Ancestrus ranunculus is actually gregarious which is quite unusual within Ancestrus and with hyper, uh, within Hypostomine which is the subfamily within Laurocarnae that they belong. And they live in tiny gaps of the, in the rocks 
probably very sort of flattish surfaces, very sort of very narrow. And perhaps these tentacles provide a sensory benefit, I think, to this. So even within females, it is beneficial to have them probably forward facing at the top. The male, the males will have it facing upwards because that still might provide the larval mimicry. But then you get other species and and Citrus macrophthalmus, for example, the females and males, as far as we know, it display tentacles to the same extent as the males. They have rather small um, tentacles in general. They're very generic for ancestrous thinnish, branching sometimes, but they tend to be somewhat between the sort of a borderline between the ancestrous ranunculus, which are very triangular, big ones, and the normal sort of state. But they do not have it to the same extent. Most ancestrous do display tentacles in the males around the rim of the head into sort of a double row, triple row, never really looked at that, and then going up the middle of the head as well. So it's all sort of food for thought, what are tentacles actually for in such a sort of unusual taxa? And there is never, well there's probably not going to be one answer because it's such a big genera and the, it's such a big genus. It has probably 50 like known species but there's likely a lot more and there's likely to be split up further into other genera. Previously there was genera like Xenocara which still gets stated in, um, in port lists um, but it's just basically wild ancestrous they're referring to. There is no Xenocara anymore, it was synonymised with ancestrous. And they are very common which leads to a lot of misconceptions like females don't have tentacles at all stuff like that and tentacles are very unique structures they do freak people out sometimes um anyway thank you for watching